In this corner, the new McFarlane Toys Digital Silver Age Hal Jordan. And in this corner, the DC Multiverse Plastic Man Build-A-Wave John Stewart. Both of them are hitting retail right now. Both cost $25. But which one of these Green Lanterns is worth your green? Starting off with the packaging, we have two different box styles. John is in a familiar collect to build box. Name and logo down here. Over here we can see we're collecting to build Plastic Man. Hal is in that new style of DC Direct Digital box. In general, this line has a clean, simple black and aqua motif. We got names and logos on the side. Hal Jordan comes from the Silver Age. And I don't care what this box says. John Stewart is from the Bronze Age. Why, here's the cover of Green Lantern co-starring Green Arrow number 87, just to prove it. Yeah, McFarlane calling this assortment JLA is really baffling and gonna bite them the deeper into the assortment we go. Especially when we get to Superman. For now though, here are the other figures in the wave. Though I should point out that most of the box is just Plastic Man and how to build him. As for Hal Jordan, the back of his box just has gigantic artwork. I'm not really sure where this artwork came from, but it's cool. And at the very least, does a better job of showing you what you're gonna get. That's not to say this is bad exactly. It just has different objectives. Though for being honest, Honest, isn't entirely accurate. With that being the case for packaging, this round goes to Hal. Moving on to presentation, the both figures are about 7 inches, with John being ever so slightly taller. Additionally, both figures rely heavily on reuse. Hal is built off Blue Beetle, and John was made from the Blackest Knight Kyle Rayner. He has been given a new torso piece. Looking at Kyle, and they had a smooth disc painted over the heart where they could stamp on different logos. This one just has the texture all over so they can stamp whatever they want. I'm guessing this will be the basis for most Green Lantern figures moving forward. At the very least, I'm predicting a DC Multiverse version of this Sinestro, but I am hoping that we get an updated version of this costume for John. And that's not to say that I'm not really grateful for this one, of course. After all, this was his earliest costume and his main look for a while. I'm just saying, when I think of John Stewart, this is the design that usually comes to mind. The only other new piece is the head, and they've done a really good job on that, too. The face is strong and stoic, and they did a pretty good job of translating his textured hair into plastic. Additionally, all the features have been nicely painted. My only gripe is that I think that the head might be slightly too small. Well, that and the fact that it looks like they're wearing depends. Switching over to Hal, and as I predicted, this body is perfect for Green Lantern. The logo is nice and crisp. He's been given a new ringed hand that scales with this body. Comparing Hal to John, and you can see that John's fist is ever so larger. Otherwise, the head is new and full of personality. Hal Jordan is a fearless test pilot. That smirk really conveys the cockiness. Now, if only we could get one to convey how clumsy he is. My favorite part of these figures are the matching colors. Bringing out the new Kilowog 2-pack Kyle, and you can see what I mean. Thanks to matching colors, we can finally build a nice uniform Green Lantern core. Mostly. The real question comes down to texture. Being based on Blue Beetle, Hal's costume is nice and smooth, whereas John has that knitted look. That's more of a question of how compatible they are with other figures, which I see more as a playability issue, so I'll be revisiting it then. For now, these two figures are pretty evenly solid, so for presentation, I'm calling this round a draw. Moving on to posability, and these figures have the same basic articulation scheme, so it's really going to come down to range. They can look up towards the brightest day this high, which seems pretty even Steven, and down this far, which also feels fairly equivalent. They also have an equal amount of tilt. Moving down in Hal can raise his arm ever so higher. Additionally, Hal Jordan seems to have the better range in his rotator cuff. Both of them have bicep swivel, and there's no real difference there. They also have double jointed elbows, with John having the deeper bend. And then at the ends of those arms are wrist balls that can swivel and hinge in any direction. Moving to the middle, and both figures have diaphragm joints and dumbbell waists, but I do expect that this will be a big difference. The blue beetle buck has the top row of abs sculpted over and down, whereas that blackest night cow Rainer body has a more smooth cut across. I'm predicting that these are going to get in the way. First things first, and for flying characters, they have a fantastic arch back, just to give you an idea of what a flying pose might look like, but then arching them forward, and they're actually the same. By which I mean that neither of them are all that good. While some recent figures have fared better, I would like to see more consistent progress on this area. They both have pretty equivalent tilt, and of course both figures can twist. Below the lanterns, and both figures have McFarlane 
Stallone style hips, equal and incredible high kick on both. Additionally, both figures can do perfect splits. Each lantern has a decent amount of twist in the hip, pretty much the same on both. Moving down, they've got double jointed knees with similar bends, toe articulation, and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and like Green Lantern changing from Hal to John, Pivot. Hal is better in some spots, John is better in others, but overall for poseability in this round is yet another draw. Moving on to playability, and of course both figures come with trading cards, Hal's on that new digital format. If you want to read what that says, pause here. Also, I love how the way they crop the picture makes it look like he's stroking his chin. If you want to read more about John Stewart though, you can pause here. Additionally, both figures come with figure stands, John's has the normal DC logo, and Hal has that nice new fancy digital one. Otherwise, John comes with this energy whoosh effect. I'm not entirely sure if it's supposed to go around his fist, but if it does, this is how that looks. Kind of a neat effect. Originally, I thought this was a piece that came with a Flash figure. The closest one that I have is this, which isn't exactly right. If it's reuse and I'm just not catching it, let me know in the comments. He does come with this whirly punch effect that's definitely new. It fits snugly over his hand and is a pretty fun idea. Switching over to Hal, he has not one, but two energy punches. Those, however, are reuse of the ones that came with Parallax. Though, considering how is Parallax, that's pretty appropriate. He's also got an alternate open hand for when you want to give him a high five, but most importantly, he has an accessory holding hand perfect for his lantern. Well, that's not going anywhere. It's unfortunate that John doesn't have a lantern, but he can hold Hal's with no trouble. Alternately, Hal can use this punching effect. The hands themselves, though, are not interchangeable. That said, each figure does include an additional bonus pack-in. John has the legs of Plastic Man, out of context, it does look kind of strange that the box has two naked male legs. For anyone wondering though, Plastic Man has been built off of the Blue Beetle body. If you've seen any of my videos of repaints based on this body, you'd know that I'm very critical of how they're always painting over this strap. But Plastic Man's been given new calves that don't have it. I really hope that moving forward, McFarlane uses these legs when they want to reuse the Blue Beetle body. Hal's extra bonus is unfortunately a bit more controversial. Specifically, he has an authentication code for a digital version of this figure. It exists in a virtual showroom and there are only so many of them, which is what gives it some sense of value. Essentially, it's an action figure equivalent of an NFT. If I wanted digital action figures, I just download a bunch of JPEGs. It'll go great with my windowless box collection. Again, I know that there's a market for this and because it's limited, it has value, but I do suspect that the crossover between figure collectors and NFT collectors isn't as big as Todd thinks it is. And just like this, went back to this, I just don't see digital as the future of collecting. Of course, playability is more than just pack-ins, either physical or digital. It's also about how well your figures play with others. Starting with the other Hal Jordans and John Stewart's in my collection, and here we have the Superpowers versions. Hal is Kenner and John is McFarlane. Here's a DC Direct Hal from the 2009 Justice League of America box set. Next up is DC Universe Classics by Mattel. DC Essentials from DC Collectibles, and the DC vs. Dark Horse Green Lantern vs. Predator 2-pack version by NECA. This Hal has a special feature, however. Thanks to a swappable head, you can turn him into Jon Stewart. On the subject of Jon, and here we have the DC Comics Multiverse version by Mattel, the Endless Winter version from DC Multiverse by McFarlane, and the Dawnbreaker 2-pack version of Hal built on the Jon Stewart body. Moving us into the Justice League with Superman, and here's Action Comics 1000. Here's Hub whose cape is tickling Hal's knee, and then for a good classic Batman, here we have Nightfall, and Hush towering over them both. Next up is the McFarlane Collector Edition version of Wonder Woman, and the Flashpoint version of Barry Allen. It's worth noting that during the JLA line, it was Wally under the mask. Since these are both classic styles of Green Lantern, here we have a nice classic looking Aquaman, which is just Endless Winter with Barry Allen's head. But unlike these two, for someone who is actually part of Grant Morrison's JLA run, and here we have Martian Manhunter. As always, I have to comment that he is a bit on the short side. For the correct lantern for the JLA, we've already seen Kyle Rayner. Of course, if we're going to bring out the two-pack version of Kyle, we gotta bring out Kilowog. Not to mention the larger-than-life villainous red lantern, Atrocitus. For the arch-nemesis of every green lantern, though, and here we have Sinestro. That said, for the villain within Hal, and here we have Parallax. For a relative scale comparison, here's Hal and John with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man. And as always, here they are with Stealth Iron 
Iron Man. Not having that long john texture in Hell is a great match for your Justice League, less so than with your Green Lantern collection, and vice versa. Mixing and matching all three styles and everyone has a certain level of uniqueness while still matching thanks to the colors. And honestly, even with the texture difference, I do think it's the matching colors that bring it all together. That said, now that we have this version, I wouldn't mind one on the textured body. To give you an idea, this is what that would look like. You'd have to repaint the neck, but I think it works. I know the logo isn't what pops to mind when we think of Hal, but referring back to the artwork, and that is what he was wearing at the time. Conversely, if you wanted to repaint Hal's neck, this is what that combination would look like. I feel like this head scales a bit better with this body. And on that subject, here's how the Endless Winter head looks like on this body. The hair is wrong, but the size is better. And lastly, here's the new Hal head on the original Green Lantern body. It's a bit small, but the greens match. And just that little bit of extra personality does make it feel more like Hal. John has a couple of really cool effects, and I do like how you can mix and match accessories between the two figures. But with two extra hands, two energy effects, and a lantern, Hal just feels more complete. Obviously, the main value for John is being able to build Plastic Man, but it cannot compete with the value of finally completing our core classic Justice League. For playability, this round goes to Hal. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. Much has been said about the new digital wave and whether or not it's worth the $25 price tag just for a digital token. For me, the real value comes from the extra character-specific accessories. With DC Multiverse going as high as $22.99, I don't mind paying a couple of extra bucks if it means I get more. But that's me. John is great and it's wonderful to finally get this version of the character, even if he does have nothing to do with the basic premise of this wave. Still, with half of his piece count just being a pair of normal sized legs that are mostly reuse, the value just doesn't quite feel as high as other Build-A-Waves. With so many great recent releases, I feel like it's us Green Lantern fans who are the winners. But for price, this round goes to Hal, who wins the battle 5-2. Now that we've settled that debate, the next question is, what's the best 7-inch scale Hal Jordan ever made? That, however, is a question for another day. If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.